want to pivot now to Carlos Ghosn, the former Nissan chairman and CEO who joins us live from Beirut, Lebanon, uh, where he is promoting a book that he has written about uh, what's happened with his life, especially over the last couple of years. Um, Carlos, thanks for joining us. We uh, There's the book, Broken Alliances, which you have written. Uh, the big question I think a lot of people have when they when I bring up your name, they say, he's in Lebanon now. What are the chances he's there for good? Or does he think that he'll ever leave Lebanon? Oh, I, I hope I will. Uh, and I'm fighting uh, for it. I mean, the only thing that forbids me to get out of Lebanon is the fact that there is a red notice, uh, you know, sent by Interpol at the request of the Japanese authorities. But uh, there are ways to fight the red notice because Interpol has its own rules. And usually when human rights are violated, they should not intervene. When the issue is political, they should not intervene. When the issue could be solved outside the legal uh, boundary, they should not intervene. So I have these three elements in my case. So I have to be patient. But I obviously hope to be able to leave Lebanon one day. Carlos, since we last talked, Americans Peter and Michael Taylor uh, were sentenced in Japan for their roles in helping you escape from that country. I think one of them received one year and eight months. The other received two years in prison. What did you think as you saw their legal case unfold? Well, frankly, that means uh, uh, you're mentioning the Taylors. I would mention Greg Kelly, which is still struggling, uh, you know, with the, with the Japanese courts. All of this turns around the hostage justice system in Japan. You know, frankly, the, the statistics of the prosecutors win in 99.4 percent of the of the cases is frankly just amazing, amazing. And not, not only the statistic is amazing, how can you win in 99.4% in the case in a democrat, in so-called democratic country? But, but at the same time, you're proud of it. You're saying, oh my God, that means the prosecutors are doing a wonderful job in Japan because they're winning 99.4%. We never talk about the defense. We never talk about the judge. It looks like, you know, they are, uh, you know, just establishing the sentence and making the decision. And everybody else is just a, decor a, a decoration. Frankly, I, I feel bad. Not I feel bad about, for them. I feel bad for all the people who are going through the system, particularly if you are a foreigner. Carlos, separate from your situation, you're watching the auto industry. I know you still talk with a number of people in the auto industry. What do you think about this transition that we're seeing with so much money being poured into the development of electric vehicles right now? Oh, it's, it's normal, Phil. You know, I know, this is a 13 years old story when I launched the first mass marketed electric car. I told you we're going to get there. A lot of people were skeptical. Now the whole industry is about a transition to electric car. You know, this industry is about three things now, uh, electric cars, autonomous cars, and mobility for all. And we are seeing this unfolding in front of our eyes. And those who, are, who prepare for this, invest in this before the others, will be the winners, will be the winners of, uh, of the game. It's amazing to see how many companies are saying, you know, we're going to abandon completely the combustion engine in uh, 2030, in 2035, 2040. The same company which uh, in 2008, when I launched the first uh, series of mass market electric car, were laughing and were very skeptical about it. You and I have talked. You uh, have had great things to say about Elon Musk and Tesla when we've had conversations in the past. Put Tesla aside. We know that they're the industry leader right now. Is there one automaker that you look at around the world and you say, if there's somebody other than Tesla that's going to rise up and truly be the company that's going to take Tesla off the king of the hill in terms of electric vehicles, which company would it be and why? Well, uh, in my opinion, it's going to be a German company. I would hesitate to tell you if it's going to be a Mercedes or Volkswagen, uh, yeah, Volkswagen and all the group of companies. I, I would say the Germans are the first one who, after criticizing the electric car heavily in 2008 and mocking it, uh, you know, discovered all of a sudden that they needed to move and they moved swiftly. Japanese are late. They are stucking with the hybrid and now with the hydrogen cars. Maybe hydrogen cars... Uh, which we call fuel cell, will come one day, but uh, the next 10 or 15 years are going to be the, the era or the generation of electric cars. Are you surprised the Japanese automakers uh, have taken so long to really get their act together when it comes to investing in electric vehicles? No, not at all. You, you know, the, the strength of the Japanese is, uh, you know, uh, the, the rigor by which they can enhance and uh, develop 
uh, systems that they adopt, but it takes a long time for them to adopt an innovation. And for electric car, uh, except Nissan that I was leading at the time, uh, they were very, very slow to move, and they are still slow to move, and they're going to pay a high price for this.